I, I'm really happy to be here, and I, I do um, I do have um, very fond uh, memories, and I'm enjoying currently working on supplier diversity. It, our goal ultimately is to have a very inclusive supply chain. That's really what we're trying to do. That's the procurement's goal. Now the rationale for the program, I had mentioned, it's not about doing the right thing, it's about doing the smart thing. It, it enables uh, business value, as Peter had mentioned. We talk about innovation when we have, a more, we have a more competitive supply chain. We have better competition when we send out our RFPs. We, um, we are quicker to market. Sometimes the smaller companies are a little more agile, a little more flexible than a giant company would be for us. So if we're looking for a niche play and we need something quickly, uh, more competition is better. We see that as a huge advantage. Because more and more, and I don't know how many uh, folks in the room compete on RFPs, but you're seeing more and more sections on diversity. What are you doing to promote diversity? Are you a diverse supplier? If you're not a diverse supplier, what are you doing to, uh, to promote diverse uh, supplier diversity? And then tier ones, we hear it from the companies, uh, some of those giant companies that Peter spoke about that have, you know, the 85% of the spend. They receive RFPs. They are, you can be sure, 100% of them, the RFP will have a good section on supplier diversity or a registration that is similar to what, what I spoke about, where it says, first of all, you're a diverse company, and if you're not, what are you doing to support supplier diversity? So these are more and more taken into account when, when evaluation teams get together to look at RFP responses. I'm going to go into the qualitative criteria and, and the quantitative criteria, so the types of things that we evaluate when we, uh, when we do RFPs or when we're sourcing goods and services. So qualitative, we will look at company capabilities. It's, it's really a, a due diligence around risk, and we're looking to make sure that uh, the companies we do business with are financially sound, that they have good uh, background checks for employees that they have that they that they have good governance around their company, so that uh, they can service us without any type of interruptions. Lawsuits, conflicts, those are the types of things we like to stay away from. We'll always ask those questions in our RFPs. Track record and customer references are also very important, and so that will be one part of the technical aspect of the RFP that we'll always ask. And we'll have specific questions that drill down into detail. The company practices and policies are another area. So supplier diversity is emerging in this area. This is where you'll see a section in any RFP that says, uh, wh what, is your, what do you have a policy on supplier diversity? Or do you have a program? What do you do to support supplier diversity? Do you have examples of supplier diversity? Uh, product capabilities. Uh, and the service capabilities. These are the table stakes, making sure, first of all, that you have a product that the company would like, and a potential client would actually like, and that you can service it in time. So if you have, you know, uh, a desk that uh, meets the functional criteria, and you can deliver it in six weeks or less, you know, those are the types of parameters. We ask for those, uh, those, types of, uh, um, those types of questions in the real estate area. I give you a couple of um, I would give you a couple of my own personal uh, what I would consider to be helpful hints when you're when you're responding to a, an RFP and you're responding to the technical section. I would say a couple of things: always answer the question, make sure that the question is fully answered, because if you don't answer the question, you won't get the points. I don't know; not everybody might be aware, but you know. There's, usually, there's often points allotted, you know, in these to keep them as objective as possible. So the team will determine, you know, what the weighting might be for a particular section of the RFP. And if you just say uh, not applicable, well, then you didn't get the points. So it's important to answer the question and not assume that it doesn't mean anything. Just because we asked it, it doesn't mean it's not important. If we asked it, chances are it is important and there are points associated with it. Another uh, bit of advice I would probably give is, uh, to um, not, not make assumptions. So if you see certain questions and you're not sure what the question actually meant and then you make an assumption on what it meant and you answer the question, there's a good chance you're not gonna get points. You know? So what I would suggest is if you're not sure, ask a clarifying question. Just make sure that you're very clear on what the question is and you answer the question. And I would give you a third one. A third one would be, uh, it's important when you answer a question to tell us, to tell us the what 
what it is you do or what is so great about the product, what is so great about the, uh, the service. But it's also important, if you want to get the points, it's important to explain the how. So that's a very, that's almost like a cardinal rule. Whereas, uh, and I can, tell, I can give you a very good one of a recent experience I had, not that long ago, where we answered, we, and I was scoring the diversity, since I'm the supplier diversity person, we had asked questions on the diversity program. To one supplier, and not, and at this, on this particular RFP, it was not the most sophisticated group when it came to supplier diversity. But one of the suppliers says, yes, we do have a supplier diversity program. So I perked up because I figured this is really, that's fantastic, they have a supplier diversity program. And then the next line was, due to confidentiality, we can't share any of it with you. So then, so then I said, well, my feedback to that company would be the next time you do this, why don't you not talk about, you don't have to tell me what you did for other companies, why don't you tell me what you might be able to do for me, you know, or for RBC. So those are a couple of helpful hints I thought I'd just share with you. And I will now uh, talk about the quantitative criteria because what we do is we'll draw a wall and we'll have a group of people analyzing the technical aspect of the RFP and then there'll be another group analyzing the financial. And so, and then we'll, we'll somehow get them together towards the end of the process. So it's important to know we're analyzing financials because we want competitive bids, but we're also analyzing the qualitative criteria. So this next piece, any questions on the qualitative uh, criteria? Yes, there's someone at the back of the room. You might need the mic, I think. <laughs> I'm always asked to use my inside voice, my indoor voice at the bank. <laughs> my uh, question is, uh, I'm liking all the process, I'm liking all of the questions. Who are who is asking the questions or who does the review? Yes, that's the key question. And so I set it up a little bit before when I said, uh, when I said that when we have a long, we have a three month process or four month process, it's cross functional. So there will always be a procurement person that, uh, that runs the process to make sure it's fair. We're looking for you know, a fair opportunity for everybody that's competing. The, the working team or the evaluation team will be, as I had mentioned, there, might, there will be somebody from, so it would be corporate real estate in my area. I would, it's a subject matter expert that will get in the bank, in the business unit. So if it's, uh, if it's a marketing RFP, it would be, uh, what area are you in? I can make it specific to your, what area do you uh, supply in? Oh, okay, so, so then, so, in any, so I was gonna say, so if it's a marketing RFP, then there'll be a, uh, a person in the procurement area that handles the marketing team and there'll be folks from the marketing team that participate as evaluators. And then there might be somebody from corporate communication, if it's for marketing, maybe there'll be somebody from corporate communications who participates. So it's a cross-functional team of five or six, um, it could be more, some, but it could be five or six folks. There's, we usually never have less than three that will score the RFPs. So may I just say, so I guess what my questioning is, I'm looking for the diversity within the diversity. You know, like uh, yes. the people so, that are actually doing this, are they all the same type? Or, I mean, or, or no, are we actually not. seeing diversity there as well no, no, for a better sake? Yeah, no, it's a very good point. I'll, I'll, and I'll try it. Uh, it is a diverse group, absolutely. So what it is is the procurement team is uh, really in the corporate function. You know, that's, uh, it's, um, it's the back office operations. We just want to make sure that we're buying goods and services at good prices. And like I had mentioned, the procurement person might be saying, I hope that we can get good savings out of this initiative. I want to have a good negotiation, get the most value I can for the bank. And that's what the procurement team representative does. Then the business unit, the corporate real estate person that I was talking about before, the head of design for, for an architectural RFP. The head of design and construction will have one or two team members come in from RBC that will be focused on making sure the projects get done with good quality of design and get done on time and on budget. So that's their focus. It's a totally different focus than what I have. Then Jones Lang LaSalle, who is our outsourced service provider, they will be in there helping us with the, process, with the sourcing process. And they'll look at it from the outsourced provider because they'll have to manage the supplier in the long run. 
So they'll have somebody from their project management team that comes out that says, okay, let me see how the project went in the ultimate and we'll give you feedback and we'll see if they're capable. So you will always have the different viewpoints and actually that's the healthy, that's the healthy strain we have on the team because we all have slightly different, uh, uh, different objectives when we go in and then we become a cohesive team agreeing on what are the key objectives for the initiative. But everyone has a very different perspective. And I will go in, as, or somebody from my team will go in from the supplier diversity side. And we will score the RFP on the diversity policies of the company. And we'll have an environmental specialist go in from corporate real estate that all they care about is the environmental impact of what this uh, new supplier will do for us. And then the legal team might go in and uh, we'll, we'll have their perspective as well. So the, the, there is always diversity and it's for that reason. It's th that's how we keep the process clean and keep the process honest and keep it, fun that's how the best way it works. It's diversity of thought around the table. And uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, I'm just trying to project that it is a very, it is diversity, it's a concept of diversity. And I've never really, I've never thought of it from that angle. So thank you, thank you, sir. I'm gonna use that in future presentations as well. Any other questions? So then, so that was, uh, those were what we call the, um, the harder or the tangible parts of what the team scores. So we say that's the objective part, that's what we're ultimately trying to do. But what I have here is what I would offer as some extra advice, because there are intangible qualities that go a long way in an RFP process as well. And so, uh, you know, the tangibles, like I said, they were the qualitative and they're the quantitative. But the intangibles are very important because they can shape the customer perspective whether or not you want to. And I would, you know, most of the time say, look, let's focus, as the procurement professional, I would say, let's focus on what's on the paper. Let's not bring in biases from past experience. Let's focus on the content of this RFP. And let, let's not even focus, if we had a bad experience with one supplier or a good experience with another supplier who are competing, let's keep that out of it. We're looking at, we're gonna be very objective. But I have to tell you, and that you will always, we will always be dealing with, and, this, and the, the proponents that are competing for the business will have their representatives front and center. Uh, we're dealing with the procurement uh, single point of contact or dealing with the team during presentations, etc. So these intangibles are very important. So I've, I've laid out a few. Uh, one is just professionalism, being prepared. So being prepared prior to the RFP, in building the relationship. Uh, attitude, everybody looks for positive attitude in every aspect of uh, anything they, they do, whether or not it's somebody looking to hire an employee or if it's uh, looking to get a new supplier. The attitude is so, so important to deal with people who are positive and have a can-do attitude. Flexibility, business requirements change constantly. And in a large organization, it's, uh, it can be particularly stressful, you know, if our business requirements change and if we're look and we're dealing with a supplier and we're saying, listen, this has changed, I need to do something different with the product or I, need, I don't need as much of the product right now or, you know, can we spread out the orders of the product? And uh, the suppliers that say, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it, that's, a, <laughs> that's not a good recipe for future success. The, the ones we're looking at are the folks that can help us out when the chips are down. It's great to help, anybody can help when everything's going well. But when things are difficult or something has changed, the people who step up to the plate and can deliver when, when we're under pressure, those are the ones that the team will always want to go back to. Regardless process, I mean, the process notwithstanding, I should say. You know, you're going to want to go back to the people that you know always, they can always come through in the clutch. Accessibility. Sorry, did, uh, I hope you've been hearing me all this time. Yeah, that sounded so loud. So accessibility is about, um, this is within a process or even in a relationship. So um, I'll give you an example. And we always ask for a single point of contact when we do an RFP. So uh, some companies, some proponents, the single point of contact is just always there to answer the phone. Something comes up, you call that person, he or, he or she is always, and they pick it up on one ring. And you think, oh my goodness. You know, you almost, like when you say, oh, I have an issue and I'm gonna to try to call them, you feel like, uh, oh, I can solve this in five minutes. 
Then there are companies, as I can think of one in particular, it was many years ago, but it was a team-based. They had a team-based, uh, and they really, uh, they really bragged about it. You know, we have a team-based, uh, there's five of us on the team, you can reach out to any five. So whenever anything came up on that, and it was in a particular RFP, I would have to leave five phone messages. You know? And uh, in an RFP process here, you're looking to resolve things quickly. So the idea of leaving five messages for one company, because I'd had to reach out to six other companies. So the idea of reaching out to five individuals on one company, and you knew none of them was going to answer the phone because they all were relying on their other team, team member. That's a very bad example of uh, being accessible. Patience, because, uh, and I think it was Anila uh, referenced it before, it took me a couple of years. I've been, I've met with you for a few years and we, I have the business. I've always, uh, I've always uh, maintained that the patience is probably one of the most th important things you can do. The persistence is very important, the tenacity that Peter referenced. But uh, the patience is extremely important because it's not, um, you, I mean, it's not that you just have to earn it for year after year by always asking, you know, can I get the business or are you earning the business? But I think that um, it's just very, very important to understand that things don't work always so, so quickly at large corporations. But I can tell you one thing, it's, uh, it's often worth the wait. And then there's uh, promptness and conciseness. So I'm going to move on in the interest of time and that these are the helpful hints that I think are good ones to note. I'm going to summarize them quickly because I've been told I'm running out of time. But So do provide a single point of contact. This is for an RFP exercise. This is also very good for establishing a relationship. Have a single point of contact that we know we can reach out to. But don't forget to have a backup. So don't give us the, the five-person team, but definitely have the single point and then have a backup in case that person's away. Respect the process because it, we're trying our very best you know, to, to lay out the process and they're, they're often could, they could be stressful processes as well for parties on both sides. Answer the RFP questions concisely. Don't, and if you want to know more about the supplier diversity program, you can just go on to rbc.com and then you'll get more detail again. My name is Mary Anderson and I'm the president of Weeby Canada. We're one of the certification organizations that uh, Charles had mentioned and others at RBC. What a fabulous morning for this uh, program to take place. And again, congratulations to RBC for hosting such an activity. But Indy, because I know him really well, knows t systems, tools, governments, but he also has thought leadership and he really has engaged in developing supplier diversity and is the chair of our board of directors at WeBe Canada. So from Indy's perspective, Indy, tell us a little bit about um, supplier diversity at TELUS. Thanks, Mary. Supplier diversity at TELUS, well, our journey started back in 2011 when we uh, first thought about what do we want to do from uh, expanding our social responsibility from a, a corporation point of view. If you guys uh, looked at the core values for TELUS, we immensely give back to the community that we live in. But supplier diversity was a lot more than that. And this is when I think our first journey started with RBC and Charles, and we started discussing what does RBC, what are they doing with supplier diversity? So we took a model of saying, let's not start from scratch, let's learn from our leaders, and let's continue building supplier diversity within Canada. And TELUS took an active role. So we started formulating a four-year strategy for supplier diversity. Now, I'm gonna bring it over to Steve. <laughs> because Steve fits in another, he, he straddles places in his business model. Steve, how were you introduced to supplier diversity? Um, well, I think it kind of echoes a bit of what uh, Indy mentioned, uh, this community that has been built. We were introduced to uh, the world of supplier diversity by RBC. Uh, RBC was a long-standing client of ours, and after Charles mentioned, RBC got involved with CAMC. Uh, in 2004, only a couple of years later, uh, we were invited to an event very similar to this. And I think what RBC identified at the time 
is something that we try to pay forward, which is that there's value in introducing people into the supplier diversity world and the benefit that it does bring to many organizations, whether or not the company itself is owned by a woman or a minority or an Aboriginal or anyone that qualifies uh, under certification. Um, at the time, we were owned by Omers and owned by Golf Town. Now we are owned by Staples. Uh, so we are not a tier one diverse supplier. We're still a supplier to the bank. Uh, but what we try to do is identify suppliers that sell to us and through us to clients such as TELUS and RBC um, to say there's still, a, there's still a place, there's still a value that we can bring and we identify those suppliers that work through us that leverage our relationships and are already having the infrastructure or the systems in place that may be cost prohibitive for a, a, a tier one diverse supplier to have in place. By working with us, they get the broader exposure of the contracts we have, the relationships we have, um, and it's been a win-win in a lot of ways. Um, so we've, we've greatly benefited from RBC introducing us to supplier diversity. Well, Jenny Rock is the operations manager at Spirit Staffing and Consulting Inc. And the, um, she is also an award-winning employment and training agency with a proven track record for securing the right fit between employers and job seekers. And last night, Jenny was the winner of the RBC Canadian Women Entrepreneur of the Year Award, TELUS Trailblazer Award. Congratulations. <laughs> well, one of the things that that particular award recognized, and this is where you're seeing a common thread, that uh, they demonstrated outstanding leadership within her company, her market, she set standards for originality, quality, and successful management. And those recognitions are some of the leadership qualities that we like to bring into this world of supplier diversity. It's about winning. So Jenny, uh, tell us a little bit more about the certification process. Thanks, Mary. You know, when we first got certified, it was actually quite a simple, um, a little bit complex but easy process. You know, a lot of the documents, are, and, and depending on which um, organization that you qualify to certify under, for us, we qualify to cer uh, certify under Camp C because we're an Aboriginal woman owned business as well as WeBe Canada. So the process is quite similar. Um, they ask you to fill out a package, um, you have to provide some business documents that you should have already in your back pocket, but that could be your business licenses, past three years of your financial statements, um, pretty much that. And then all you have to do is pay your fee, submit your package. Once the certifying agency gets your package, they'll come and verify those documents, uh, come check out your location, and then you're certified. And you have access to all of these great events, great networking, and some of the mentorship programs. So tell us a little bit more about your company and a little bit how it fits into this. Okay. So as a full service apparel manufacturer, we really specialize in white label for a number of retail brands. Um, and essentially, I mean, I think I'm a perfect can or my business is a perfect candidate in terms of being in the supplier diversity space. Uh, because we do have a unique proposition, the fact that every one of our products are proudly handcrafted on Canadian soil, that in itself in textiles is a rarity. Um, we are growing and uh, we're building a community. And, and so going back to Mary's point about you know, being serious of your business, um, whether or not you want to grow and being committed, uh, I think we're also more of a purpose-driven company. Um, uh, you know, we really want to give back. Uh, we're your typical immigrant family that came to Canada with nothing. And this great country has given us so many opportunities to really lead a better life. And, and I think that's where um, this community of supplier diversity is so embracing and is, is so, 
I just get emotional every time I talk about it because then I meet individuals such as Steve and the only reason why we even got involved with supplier diversity is the fact that Steve and Staples promotional products, they were looking for um, suppliers of diverse background and could also do the work. I mean, that's the biggest thing that I think I've gotten out of this in my business. If I look back at our business with uh, Staples Promotionals, from the time when we started doing business to now, our sales has grown, as of last year, 167%. Wow. wow. They have opened up opportunities for us to provide our unique proposition, um, and we're specialized. So we're not going to be everything to everyone, and Steve and his team completely understands where our unique proposition is and where there's opportunities. And the biggest thing I always, I'm very thankful for is supplier diversity is we still have to earn our business, just like Jenny, just like Neely out there. She's, you know, we all earn our business, but what has now done with supplier diversity is we're now finally invited to the table. And that in itself is the biggest benefit of being a um, certified diverse supplier. That's great, thank you. And uh, this, is, this is the bottom line business benefits that have been described here with uh, incredible business changes that have happened because of supplier diversity. So, and it's not only supplier diversity, you're great businesses, but, but now you have the place to shine and the door that's opened. And that's what this is all about. But um, one of the things that I wanted Kathy to explain, and I'll ask the other panel members too, you know, one of this is about a supply chain. You know, there's been words that have been provided here, tier one, tier two, what does all that really mean and where do you fit within it, Kathy? Um, so we consider ourselves a tier two to Staples promotional products and this again goes back to the value proposition and what we provide. Uh, we do not have the infrastructure nor is my growth strategy uh, focusing just on the branded merchandise industry is, is where I'm going to put all my resources. Again, I a cut and sew apparel manufacturer based in Toronto. I don't make hats, I don't make pens in the branded merchandise. Hello everyone. My name is Rena Pilateri. I'm RBC's Regional Vice President for Vaughan and King Township. On behalf of RBC, just wanted to thank everyone for coming today. We are hoping that uh, you enjoyed this information session. I think you would all agree with me that life is a learning journey and together we're stronger in sharing information, do's and don'ts and best practices. So we hope that the time invested this morning has allowed you to broaden your horizons with regards to supplier diversity.